Hello friends, today we will see the tricks to find the number of states that can be counted by a counter, basically n of a mod n counter. So before starting this video, let me clear some doubts. First one is, what is the difference between active low and active high reset? So basically in some of the question, you get reset bar, in some of the question you get reset bar with bubbled over here and in some of the question you get only reset so what does it mean so if in the flip flop the reset is with bar it means it is active low that is if the input here is zero then the reset will be activated and if the flip flop is having the reset with bar and bubbled with input then also it is active low and if the flip flop is having only reset written that means the re reset will be activated when the input is high so basically active high so basically what we can conclude is if the reset is ret written uh, with bar then it will always be active low and if the reset is uh, written without bar then it will be active high second doubt is how to distinguish between up uh, up counter or down counter so basically if the output of, of one flip flop is given as a clock to the another flip flop if the transition is like this no bar to bar that is no bar q0 is here okay not q do not complement so no bar to bar then it will be up counter or if the transition is like this bar to no bar Basically, if the bubble is not present here and the output is taken from this Q0 complement, then it will also be up counter. And if the transition is like this, no bar to no bar or bar to bar, then it will be down. Now the third doubt is, what is the effect of overriding input? So basically, if the clock is don't care. And if the clear is 0, this is clear bar, this is preset bar and this is output state of a flip flop. If the clear bar is 0, preset is 1, then the output will 0. Basically the output is output gets clear. If the clear is 1, clear bar is 1, preset is 0, preset bar, then the output will be 1. If clear bar and preset bar both are 0, that means that state of the flip flop will be invalid. It can't be judged. Okay. If the clear bar and preset bar both are 1, then the output of the flip flop will depend on the input. Okay. Input dependency. Okay. So, starting with this trick, first we will see the trick for asynchronous counter. Here in the circuit, we are given the 4 bit counter. We are considering this counter as a asynchronous counter. And the clear bar is controlled by this XNOR gate. The counter we are given with clear bar. So what does it mean? It means that clear will be activated for zero input. Okay. So uh, we know that XNOR output will be one when the input are same and output will be zero when the input are different. Okay. So we need to find the state when both these input are different. So basically clear bar can be written as Q3 x nor q2 okay so when we start counting q3 q2 q1 q0 0 0 0, 0, 0 clear bar we know that uh, clear will be z clear bar will be 0 when q3 and q2 are different okay so in the first state q3 and q2 are same so clear bar will be 1 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 1 0 0 now in at this state q3 and q2 are different so it means that clear will be activated clear bar will be activated and it will be zero so this state won't be counted and the counter will be resetted to zero zero okay so the number of states that can be counted by this counter is 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is mod 4 counter. 
Okay, now let's consider this four bit counter as a synchronous counter, and let let's see what happens now. So here we know this clear bar will be activated for uh, Q3 and Q2 when these two inputs are different. Okay. Since this counter is synchronous counter, so we need to consider clock also. So we will consider clock Q3, Q2, Q1, Q0. So first, for first clock, since here this clock is positive edged, so I am considering this positive edge triggered clock. So 0, 0, 0, 0. This here clear bar. For the second clock, this for the first clock, this clear will not be activated. So it will be 1. For the second clock, it will be 0, 0, 0, 0001, clear will be 1. Third clock, 0, 0, 0001, 0, 1. For the fourth clock, 0, 0, 1, 1, clear will be 1. For the fifth clock, 0, 1, 0, 0. Now you can see this. Now the clear will be clear bar will be 0, but it won't be activated as in uh, asynchronous counter since this output will reflect only if the clock is driven so when the next clock arrives then only this clear will be derived to this input okay so this state 0 1 0 1 won't be counted and the counter will be resetted to 0 0 0 0 so here we can see the counter will count 1 2 3 4 5 states so it, this counter will be mod 5 counter and in the case of asynchronous counter it was mod 4 counter. So basic difference uh, in, in asynchronous counter and synchronous counter is that uh, in asynchronous counter clear will be activated as soon as the clear becomes 0 but in synchronous counter clear will be activated when the clear becomes 1 and next clock is arrived. Okay. Now we will see some sums which have already came in gate exam. So first sum is we have to find the n of mod and counter and here we are given with asynchronous counter okay. The n will be dependent to the clear input okay clear bar input basically here it is reset bar okay. So we need to find for what combination of input the, this uh, reset will be activated so for that we can see this uh, this is a NAND gate right so when Q2 and Q0 both will be 1 then only this output of NAND gate will be 0 ok so that means the reset will be activated right so we can say this Q2 Q1 Q0 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 we want this q2 and q0 both should be 1 so we will stop when this q2 and q0 become 1 ok 1 0 1 ok so we can say that at this state reset will be activated and we can see this counter will count 1 2 3 4 5 so it can count 5 state so this counter will be mod 5 counter so coming to the next question so we need to find the n of mod and counter and we are given with synchronous counter As you can see this clock is given separately to each flip flop and it is common okay so we will uh, use this method present state input next state Q1, Q0 are the present output of this flip flop and uh, input will be J1, K1 basically I have written the input corresponding to Q1 first and then uh, Q0, uh, input corresponding to Q0, J0, K0 ok then next state will be the output of the flip flop after applying this input ok so we can say J1 is equals to Q0, K1 is 1 and uh, J0 is Q1 bar and K0 is 1 ok so first when Q1 and Q0 are 0 Q1 and Q0 is 0 so J1 will be 
two not so z zero t one will be will be one k not will be one j not is t one complement so basically it will be one zero one it means the uh, this jk flip flop is in reset condition so uh, output will be zero one one it means that jk flip flop will act as a toggle flip flop so for zero it will give the complement of the output so it will be one so the next state is zero one so we will consider this state right now so uh, for j one will be q zero so that will be one k1 is 1 k0 is 1 j0 is q1 complement so it will be 1 so for 1 1 the jk flip flop will act as a uh, toggle flip flop for so for 0 it will give 1 for 1 it will give 0 so we will consider this state right now so now j1 is q0 so 0 1 j0 is q1 complement so 0 1 so 0 1 0 1 will be 0 0 so it means This counter will count from zero 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 one one zero, then again zero zero. So we can say this counter is mod three counter. Okay, thank you.